Welcome to the conclusion of our Advent devotional series. Today we're looking at the question, Who do you say I am? Our reading comes from Mark 8, 27 to 38. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, Who do people say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you? he asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, You are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called a crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciples must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Well, if you could ask God one question, what would it be? That's the idea behind this devotional series. The idea of seven questions that people ask Jesus, who is God come down? But in this finale, this series conclusion, we want to see that Jesus doesn't just get asked questions, he asks them. And he asks arguably what is the most important question that ever could be asked. Yes, he asks it to his disciples that are standing in front of him, but in the way that it's written, it's clear to see that this is a question that is asked to all of us. Jesus asks, who do you say that I am? Just a bit before he asked that question, he asked a slightly different version of the same question. In verse 27, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And his disciples return back with a whole heap of answers to that question. They say, oh, some people think you're Elijah. Some people think you're one of the prophets and so on and so on. And I think the variety of response to that question is something that would still be true today. If we ask people, who do people say that Jesus is? Or well, some people might say, well, you know, Jesus, he's, he's just a good teacher, a humble man who kind of had one of many ways for us to live our lives. To some people, Jesus might be dangerous, might be a threat, a traitor, a, a con man even. Uh, the idea that kind of Jesus is just out there deceiving everyone uh, to gain a following. Or well, maybe to people, Jesus is simply misunderstood and everything that has come from the centuries following has just been way out of proportion from what it should have been. But when we look at the gospel accounts of Jesus' life, is that who we see? And I just don't think it is. When we look at the accounts of Jesus' life, when we see all of his teachings, all of his miracles, all of his encounters with people, his death and his resurrection, it all points towards Jesus being God come down, God with us. And that's what Peter is keen to cry out when Jesus asked that different version of the question again. He asked his disciples standing in front of him. He says, but who do you say that I am? And Peter cries out without hesitation. He goes, you are the Christ. And Peter spent so much every waking hour with Jesus from the recent time. And his conclusion is, after spending that time with Jesus, is Jesus, yes, you are the author of existence. 
Jesus, you are the eternal king. It's a shame that as we read on in our passage, Jesus go, uh, Peter goes from being top of the class to the very bottom of the class, but there you go. So if I may ask this question, who do you say Jesus is? It's a question that matters so much. Do you know John, the author of another gospel account of Jesus' life, he ends his gospel account by saying, these things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. (laughs) This question of who Jesus is and who we say he is matters because as we've seen right the way through this devotional series, Jesus offers life not just now, but to come and forever based on who we say that he is. It's incredible. I hope we see just why this question is so crucial. But maybe we're here and we're watching this and Maybe we feel like we've already answered that question. We would say, well, I already say, and I already accept who Jesus says that he is. I already feel like I've answered that question of, who do I say that Jesus is? But you know, as I've been going through this, the challenge for me, as I've been going through, has been, well, if that's true, and if I say that's true, What's that going to change in my life? You know, James, the uh, the New Testament writer, he writes in his letter, he goes, you believe in God, could. Uh, Even the demons believe and shudder. (laughs) Even the most hostile forces against God still have good theology. (laughs) They would still be able to answer Jesus' question correctly in one sense. And so when we consider that question, when Jesus says, who do you say that I am? There's got to be something deeper, something more than just a a right answer. And I think that's what Jesus hints at in the verses following from when he asked that question. Just a few verses on from when he asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? He then goes on to say these incredible words. He says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? The challenge for me has been if I say, if I declare that Jesus is the one who rules and who made everything, Or will I entrust everything in my life to him? If I say that Jesus is the most important person that we could ever know, well, will I live my life and prioritise my life like he is? If I say and I believe that Jesus is the saviour who lovingly lost his life on the cross for me, well, will I be prepared to lose all things for him? If I say that Jesus is the all-conquering king who walked out of the grave three days later, who sits on the throne and is waiting to return, well, will I chase and pursue him and not the things of this world? Who do you say that I am? That is a question that will change things. But it's a question that will lead us to the greatest love, the greatest joy, and the greatest life that we could ever know. Well, I hope that you have the most wonderful Christmas and a very, very happy new year to you as we approach 2023. And thank you so much for joining us for this Advent devotional series. That's a wrap.